Good afternoon and welcome to Radio One World Fest Global, brought to you by One World Fest Global. Today we will be discussing empowerment with women. This is Women's History Month, and this is actually, is this the last day, or do we have one more day? But anyway, this is the last Sunday of the month, and this is when we're here. So we're, uh, I have some two dynamic guests on Radio One World Fest today, and um, one is Doma Yamu. Yes. Correct. Awesome. I said it right. And Miss Leslie Jacobs to my right. So we, these are two dynamic women who are powerful in business, and we're just going to get right into it, and I'm going to start with Doma. And so Doma, yes. um, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and where you're from. Let's talk a little bit about that. All right. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to World World Fest for inviting me today. I'm so honored to be here and to talk about myself. Uh, my name is Somal Hamo, and uh, I was uh, born in India and my parents are from Tibet. And uh, just to talk about a little bit about my history in terms of my parents, uh, they're from Tibet, but uh, they moved to India as a refugee. And that's how I was born in India. And then I have been there for almost 20 years and just came to America to pursue my American dreams. And then uh, it's been here almost like uh, 15 years now in, um, in America. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in terms of uh, my career, I, I was introduced with a company called the World Financial Group through my brother-in-law who's here, and uh, so actually I was, uh, to talk about my company, it's a financial service marketing company, and uh, inside that World, com uh, World Financial Group company, there's one team called World System Builder, where we have a team as a goal. We are on a national campaign for the financial literacy that by 2020, we want to educate 1 million families in North America. That is our goal as a team, so that's the reason we have this ongoing financial education workshop, which we provide for public for all over in North America. So that's something I'm here to share this to everybody. So in that way, it can help them to empower them in their life. And that's awesome. I, I, I love the fact that you're looking to educate people. We all need to be educated financially. Um, Leslie, um, this is Miss Leslie Jacobs. Please tell us a little bit about where you're from, your background, and what you're currently doing. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here, um, especially being part of the One World Fest team. Uh, so my name is Leslie. I am from uh, originally Queens. I'm a Queens girl. Okay. And um, what I do is I, you know, a, a lot of my peers tell me that I'm the epitome of women's empowerment. Yes. I, I am. I am. I am all about uh, helping other entrepreneurs and, um, you know, bringing light to their brands and bringing people together for great things. Uh, I have a nine to five job. I'm a project manager at an executive search firm, one of the top firms in the city. And I also have my own business, which is the Jacobs Agency. And under the Jacobs Agency, uh, I have, a, it's an umbrella company and I have a, a bunch of different brands. Um, I do women empowerment. I have something called the ultimate play date where I work with the youth mm -hmm. and uh, we have talent shows and things to bring out, you know, their specialties and things that they do and let them express themselves. I, I also have another group called The Ultimate Soul Escape, where we go away once a year, mm -hmm. um, and it's we cater to like 30 to 45, 50, that age group. I could probably come, right? It's Absolutely. Okay. You'll have a great time. We fly in our own comedians and DJs and so forth. Um, we have Big Daddy Kane, Roxanne Shante, mm -hmm. uh, Nice and Smooth. We, we, we focus on the old school rappers because um, that's the crowd that we like to bring. Okay. And um, I also have the Women Empowerment uh, Division, which is the Lady Diamonds and uh, Boss Ladies. And Lady Diamonds, what we do, we're promoters and we put events together. Um, so we're a combination of event planners and promoters. Okay. Now, um, speaking of event planning and promoting. I know yesterday I happened to come to one of the events that you were sponsoring, correct? Yes. And tell us a little bit about that. Let's just touch on that a bit. Okay, so um, I've worked with Infinity Love Organization Champagne Wright. Um, she is the CEO and founder. Very, very passionate woman. Um, and she has a program that's based out of uh, the old Andrew Jackson High School. Okay. And she, what she does is she has a group of um, young women, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, and she mentors them. She mm -hmm. helps them with um, uh, 
oh, I'm trying to think of the word, um, college tours. She, okay. They go to college tours. Right. She helps them with prep, um, self-esteem building. She's very passionate about her brand, and I believe in her brand. And um, last year and this year, what we did is we helped them put the event together. Okay. It was primarily her guests. Mm -hmm. um, we helped with sponsors, um, all of the digital advertisement and promoting, brochures, um, a lot of consulting and, and advice in how to structure the event and things of that nature, uh, panel questions. So, um, and she was able to raise a lot of money yesterday for her organization. Awesome. Awesome. Let's talk about um, who influences you. What are some of your influences? Well, the first influence person who I'd say is my mom. Mm -hmm. I know she has done a lot for me, for my family. I remember when I grew up as a young kid, I know we were born in a very uh, simple family. Yeah. Uh, we have our own farms. And uh, so growing up also, it was a challenge for them because they just moved to India as a refugee. And it was very hard for them to, they don't have any school backgrounds. Right. And they struggled through a lot, but still, despite that, they tried to raise us, they sent us to a good college, mm -hmm. and they did their best in terms of whatever they can to provide a better future for us in terms of who, where I'm right now. So that's something I would say in terms of first goes to my mom. And then actually after coming joining to this company, I, I saw one of our head coach, who's our leaders in this company, seeing him as a simple person, as a background, and... Uh, the way he does for not only for himself in terms of because he has been through a lot in his life mm -hmm. to talk about our head coach uh, his is from Vietnam and he just came to America as any other refugee to make a better life better life okay. yeah so I think um, because of his vision and he just not only wants to help himself but at the same time he wants to help other people to achieve whatever he has achieved so it really makes me uh, feel proud to be associated with this company to see a leadership who is not only for himself, but always try to give back to his people to achieve the same goal as what he has achieved. So as a leader, you would say that he's empowered you yes. to in fact be a leader yourself. Yes. And so yeah. let's talk about empowerment and um, how you are possibly empowering other people in yes. the community. Right. So it's uh, not only about my show, it's all about a teamwork. That's mm -hmm. something I like about this uh, in this company. Everybody has the same goal to make sure that we all reach that goal to ed educate one million families in North America. Right. So that's the reason. Uh, in terms of uh, our financial center, we are not only here in New York City. In a total, we have almost like 287 financial center all over North America. So in each financial center, we have this ongoing financial education workshop, which not only we uh, provide in the office, but we have almost like inside this World System Builder team, we have almost like 57,000 campaigner team member. We will go out, do a massive campaign at the House 101. At the same time, we go in organization, churches. We do go to a college also at the same time in school. So everywhere we are trying to make sure that we can reach the families to sit down to educate. So in that way, we can really help the people out there to achieve their financial goal. Awesome, awesome. And the same question for you, Leslie. Who are some of your influences in, in your life? You know, when I, the first thing that comes to my mind is my mother. Right. And, um, and my children. Mm -hmm. So my mother, um, just speaking culturally, my mother is an Italian woman, mm -hmm. blonde hair, blue eyes. She married a black man in 1969, mm -hmm. which was incredibly tough. Yes, absolutely. The only person that showed up to their wedding was my aunt. Wow. Yeah, my Aunt Carol. Everyone, you know, it was like, oh my God, the poor kids, what's going to happen, you know? Jesus. So I'm the oldest. Mm -hmm. And um, just knowing and hearing what my mother has gone through. And, and overcame. Yeah, and overcame, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just for me, I, you know, we I was raised in Brooklyn. I, I lived in Brooklyn mm -hmm. um, until about the third grade. And mm -hmm. I lived in an all white neighborhood. Um, actually not too far from here on Pine and Crescent. Mm -hmm. And it was an all white neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we were the black family. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was hard. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I felt like I, you know, I didn't really have an identity. I was just to like, figure it out. yeah, where do I fit in? Yeah. And it was, it was really tough. And, um, 
Then we, when I, when we went to third grade, we moved to Queens, to J South Jamaica. And I remember feeling so happy that now I'm home. Now right. I'll be Accepted. around. Right. When we moved and we looked at the house and everything. And I moved, we moved there. And then I, we became the white family. Right. <laughs> I understand that. So, I can definitely relate to that. Absolutely. So in Brooklyn, when we were in Brooklyn, it was like, um, it was definitely the N word. Mm -hmm. and um, Oreo and Zebra. Then when we moved to Queens, it was Honky and Oreo and Zebra. You know. Right. <laughs> so so it was it was really challenging because um I you know I it was hard because I just didn't know where I fit in where I belong. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. somebody accept me. Right. And I was like almost like a shame they like are you Spanish? everyone thought I was Spanish. <laughs> so that glimpse of my life just magnified thinking about all the things that my mother has overcome. Right. It's, you know, it's incredible. And, um, would you say that made you determined to really make something out of your life? Just absolutely. Absolutely. Feeling and like you were alone at times, right? Absolutely. I was, I felt, I don't think I actually, and I think maybe that's why I'm so strong and right. bold mm -hmm. because I don't think I got a voice until I was, Literally in the 10th grade in Bishop Lachlan, when I went to Bishop Lachlan. That's a good school. Yeah. So ninth grade, I was in um, at John Adams and people would ask me, and my hair was curly like yours, mm -hmm. long. And they would ask me, um, what are you? You Spanish? And then at, at some point I would say, yeah, I'm Spanish because it was easier than saying I'm black and white. Right. You know? <laughs> and it wasn't until I think I was in the 10th grade and I was in Brooklyn and Bishop Lachlan and, and they're like, what are you? And I'm like, I'm mixed. Like... Right. But it took me so long to be comfortable in my own skin. To say that. And back to my mother. So my mother married a black man. Mm -hmm. And um, my father, my biological father is like very, very dark. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he got into some trouble and my mother, he was in prison. And I, I didn't come on the show to share this, but... My, so he was in prison mm -hmm. and he was in Sing Sing and my mother married to him with two young children. Right. Me and my sister Gria would go visit him. She would bring us there. Right. And they were, um, they were, the, the correction officers were really, really um, hard on him because he had a white woman. Wow. And that, they, 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 they didn't appreciate that Racism. at all. Yeah. And, um, you know, things would happen to him. My mother went to see him one weekend and by the time she got back home, she, what happened was there was a, something happened to him in the prison, in the mm -hmm. cell. Right. He was burned with gasoline, 98% mm -hmm. of his body. Oh my God. Now, who, who, who can get gasoline in the prison? Mm -hmm. Right. So he was burned 90, 98% of his body. Um, the <laughs> only parts of his body that had flesh left with a palm of his hands and his oh face. My God. And, oh my God. Yeah. Oh. And, um, here, mom, so he, he, he passed away. May a day or so later, mm, and now so here my mother is left to raise two young children. Mm -hmm. I was two, my sister was one. Wow! And um, and she did it. You know, she did it. She was a single parent for maybe a year and a half when she met my father, uh, Bootsy, and um, she had three more children with him. Mm -hmm. He he ended up passing away of lung cancer in 1993. Oh, wow. He's the only father I really knew that right, raised me. Right. right? right. So. But here she is with another black man. So, you know? Listen. <laughs> and you know, so this was this was my life. This was you know, and I, when I was in Bishop Lachlan, and um, we were talking about race, and, and it was my religion class, and they asked, we were talking, and I shared, you know, just my experience right. of you know not knowing who I was, and a, a, a magazine, it's a yeah, struggle. a magazine wanted me to write my story. And I was, I was like, I can't do that. No way. Wait, wait, wait. You know what I mean? So it's real. Racism is real. It's, it's something that, that my family has dealt with. Um, and even my, the Italian side, you know, my family's from Howard beach. Mm -hmm. So half my family is Howard beach. And, and yeah, so the they had, to, yeah. So they, they also, I'm sure had to deal with things about having black family members. Exactly. Now, Doma, yes. have you experienced anything like that? I mean, in terms of racism, do you feel that you have been affected once you came here? Uh, not that such. Uh, for me, like when I came here, luckily I have my sister already here in America mm -hmm. when I come here. And uh, so in that way, she has prepared everything for me. 
So it was hard for me in terms of uh, how we are raised in our country mm-hmm. in India, and the culture over here is so like American style. Mm-hmm. So in that way, like we are so used with the uh, holding on with your own parents and every family together. But here it's like everybody is busy with your work, and it was so hard for me to adjust. But in terms of you know like because they are like they are like more American, and I want to have somebody who's always near to me all the time. But that was a little issue in the before in the beginning when I first came to America. But pretty on after that, it was okay for me. For what the time. what about holding on to tradition? And I know that you know you coming from India, yes, right? And, yeah. Um, and you said, did you said to say Tibet as well, right? Like you had some. Uh, we are as a Buddhist. Okay. Yes. So holding on to tradition, uh-huh. how difficult or how easy has it been for you and your family? Uh, in that way, it was uh, okay because my parents, uh, they have a strong in terms of uh, holding on with their culture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it was not that much problem in India. Uh, that luckily, the Indian government was so t- uh, good for us that they provide a school for us in okay. India, in Fiji, and they also help us to preserve our own culture also. We have our own monastery mm-hmm. in, in India also. Well, after coming back here to America also, that uh, since we have people, so many of them have come before us, so they have already made some arrangement and uh, in terms of we have some monastery here in America also. Okay. So we still preserve that culture and every weekend sometimes we have like a prayers going on. Right. So we have, we can still preserve that culture. So that's important and that's what yes. One World Fest uh, Global stands for. You know, we are about appreciate, appreciating each other's cultures. Yes. And Leslie, I can definitely identify with some of the things you went through because my father, black, from the South, my grandfather, Jamaican. My, my grandfather was really, really tall, dark man. My mom's Puerto Rican. So even among your own people, you face that racism because mm-hmm. when we were in the Bronx, and I shared this with um, Kamel, our CEO and founder, I shared this with him yesterday that when I was in the Bronx, you know, because my lips were full and my hair was curly, you know, they would call me the N-word. And so I would fight. I would fight. I was a fighter. So then when my sister was more fair skin and her hair straighter, we went to Queens. I felt more like, yeah, okay. I'm Like you said, I'm home. Mm-hmm. But my sister, they call her white girl. So then guess what? Fast forward, I'm a grown adult. And I'm in church, and they're like, what are you? Are you white? No, uh, uh, what difference does it make? What mm-hmm. does that matter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was always, even among my own people, I had to prove how black I was. What is that all about? It's true. So as a result, I was like this rebel without a cause. I, <laughs> I, I fought. And, and, and not to say that that was, but, but that's part of, my father was a very strong man. He was a cop for 32 years. Oh, wow. And he showed me how to, if you have something like speak your mind don't be afraid to speak your mind no. so for some people it was like oh she's a terror but for others you know they were like okay she's a leader yeah I, I, and I was and it was like just trying to find the balance right. and now as an adult I'm at a different my son went through the same thing because he's fair um, they call him white boy they used to call me you know like I said the n-word and in some places oh you want to be black so bad or whatever I'm mixed and I love every part of my heritage now my grandfather was Italian oh. so I'm really mixed up <laughs> So I always identify everything with the food because, you know, I grew up on rice and beans and collard greens, Mm -hmm. but then, you know, the Italian part was in it, you know, food period. So I love it. So I love all people because I love all foods. Let me just say that. (laughs) Um, So I can definitely understand like, where do I fit in? And even now, you know, because people still look at you and because of what they see on the outside, they're sizing you up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Like, come on. And the thing is, I love people. I have a heart for senior citizens because as you get older, they're kind of forgotten about. And young people because they need direction. Yeah. So um, I'm happy to hear that we are all looking to share our knowledge and our experiences so we can empower other people so they can be leaders. Right. Yeah. I want to talk to both of you and see what's going on as far as your projects, any projects you have coming up. And, and, and also, why is empowerment so important to you as a woman? Uh, so empowerment is so important to me because, you know, there, there's so many, there's so much potential, I feel like, in our community. And um, a lot of times there's not enough resources or the resources are there. And people just, folks just don't know how to find them. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, 
And then again, some people, they don't have a voice. They, you know, they're, they're afraid because I mean, being an entrepreneur and stepping out on your own is, a, it is, I'm telling you, I tell people it's, it's easier. It's a paperwork. It is. I, uh, I, in 2011, I was laid off from my company. Mm -hmm. I was there for 22 years mm -hmm. and I got another job as a business director, um, director of business and I'm sorry, director of business development. And I was there for about eight weeks. And I'm helping this business get better and mm -hmm. all my ideas. And I just was sitting there like, what am I doing? I need to do this for my own company. And I resigned. Mm -hmm. And I stepped out on faith. And I did that for about five or six years. And then I realized I needed a nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. So I was renting office space in Long Island. I was, you know, promoting parties, Dougie right. Fresh, Bismarcky. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was incredible. And But it's peaks and valleys. Right. So I decided I need my nine to five, my health need benefits and all of that, right? right? And then I'll follow my dream after work. Right. Mm -hmm. When just doing that, I I mean, I would, there was no cutoff. When you have your own company and you have your own business and your passion, mm -hmm. you are nonstop. Nonstop. Yeah. Like I, I'm telling you, like I have to, even my, my mother will call me and be like, this is ridiculous put the laptop down and come over for dinner, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's hard. It's easier to get up and go to work for someone, right. put your 40, 50 hours right, in and right, come home right, than right. it is to follow yeah. your dream. And yeah, a lot of time, stop. yeah, a lot of time people are afraid. They don't really know the direction and that's where the empowerment part comes in for me. And so then you need those good people that you can trust. Right. And that you can, that are willing to learn. Right. And that's where the empowerment comes in. Absolutely. And for me, you know, I, I don't necessarily, I think I'm one of the very few business people. I don't look for business. I don't have to look for work, right. which is crazy when mm -hmm. you think about it. Right, right. Um, I remember years ago, they were like, you need a website. I'm like, no, then more people are going to call, you know? So mm -hmm. I, you know, a lot of people come to me, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the work comes to me or I'll have conversations with folks and I'll see that there's a need for something and I make my suggestions and they're like, Oh my God, that's brilliant. Uh, you know, some advice is taken, some is not. And then I'll help them. I coach them. I'll um, direct them to other people because I'm, I'm a networking queen. Of course. So if I can do it, I know someone who can. who can like literally I know someone who can. So mm -hmm. that's where the empowerment part comes in for me because I like to see people succeed. I like to see people follow their dreams. I know how hard it is to step out on faith and do that. And I like to be able to help Encourage folks them. do that. Yes. And mm -hmm. so they can win. Right. What about yourself, Dama? Let's talk about, you know, um, why empowerment is important to you. Right. Well, I think that's something I think everybody needs to have that. And uh, the thing is, as she mentioned, I think it's the resource. It's hard to get for them. I know why we, I think most of people here in America is immigrant people like us. Mm -hmm. But we all came here to pursue our American dreams. Right. But the thing is that at the same time, even though we are in five years, 10 years, 20 years in America, but still we are in the same page, you know, like there's something never it's kind of improving. And the thing is, I think you don't have access to all the knowledge and information for you to have a better future, right? So that's something in terms of coming to our business. What I really like about it is that uh, you can have access to all this knowledge for yourself for free. That's something we offer here in our platform. For free? Yes. If you say for free, free is for me. Sign me up. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And we have all the topics which you can learn. I think the, usually when you talk about financial industry, the thing is only here to sell you something, yes. right? Or you try to recruit somebody. Mm. But that's something I like about this platform is there's no any other company like our company. So when you come to our class in terms of talk about like why financial education is important is that you can come to our class, you'll have a workbook and also you have the book and we have an instructor, they will explain on each topic of finance. So whatever the knowledge you learn here, you can apply in your life actually. Right. That's something I feel it's been more power. And not only you can learn, once you learn the knowledge, but at the same time, if you don't apply and implement, that's purely an information. Right. So that's something if you want it, we can help you out to apply this knowledge to save. At the end, it's about you work hard for the money, but you have, have to know the place for you to save money in the right place so that money can work for you when you retire. Yes. You know, that's something that this company does it. And that's something it let, even though if you can't provide for a service for them, but the knowledge we provide here, if they come at least one of the one of the workshop to come and attain, it gives me an immense satisfaction yes. that at least I show them a roadmap mm -hmm. to have a better financial future. Right. Mm -hmm. That's something I think that's something I think everybody needs to 
come and learn. Absolutely. Right? That's something I'm here to show them and to help them to have a better financial future in the road ahead of them. And we need that with yes. all the stuff that's going on in society. And even just some years ago, I was in financial services, Wall Street. I, was, mm -hmm. I spent almost 30 years on Wall Street. Yeah. And then in 2008, the market crashed. Right. And I still hanging on. And 2010, I'm laid off. I'm like, okay, now what happens? Yes. And then, you know, the the good. I ended up getting the contracts. I was making some really good money, and mm -hmm. I'm very spiritual. And the Holy Spirit told me to save for a rainy day. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was making anywhere from twelve hundred to thirteen hundred dollars a week, mm -hmm. and I was putting money in my account and money mm -hmm. in my son's account every week. He's gonna go to college, you know. So I'm gonna be ready, not knowing what the future is gonna hold. Right. And then fast forward 2012, I had couldn't walk and ended up having back surgery. Right. So I was out of work for three years. If I didn't save that money, right. what would I be? Now, I did okay, but I probably could have done a lot better if I was talking to Doma here, oh, yeah. if I was educated. <laughs> yes. Because you find yourself sometimes when you're working for someone else, you're doing that work and you want to do, do it to the best of your ability, and then people are recognizing you, and then they're giving you more. Right. And next thing you know, you have no life. You You're just kind of married to the position that you have right. and then you want to continue to exceed and do well and you get the bonuses and the money and the money and the money and the money so today it's not about the money for me mm -hmm. today it's about me sharing everything that i've been through right. everything that i've accomplished I've, I've accomplished some things i've done leslie and i have a lot in common in terms of the promotions i've we done do. promotions and marketing and i and i honestly i did that while i was working on wall street had my own business non-stop entertainment uh, with my former partner um, Diane Gibbs, and mm -hmm. we did comedy. We were, um, we did big shows, R and B shows. We collaborated with other promoters. We um, went on. We did a Michael Jordan celebrity golf tournament with a good friend of mine out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. and um, you know we had fun doing it. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. And and so the more fun it was, the more we did. Right. But then when it stopped becoming, stopped being fun to me, I was like, okay, what is this? I, it's, this is, I, I lost the interest right. because it wasn't touching my heart. Now I'm looking at young people. Mm -hmm. So I started teaching young people mm -hmm. choir. Mm -hmm. And then with that, I would write songs for them. And then everything was always movement with mm -hmm. me and just having devotion with them. Right. And then you see my son grow up being the single parent, right. trying to instill good morals and values. And then... Suddenly I'm on my own and I'm like, what's going to happen? I don't have a job. Right. I have back surgery. I go back to school. I get another degree. Right. I start working in education. And then I ended up getting sick again, mm. physically. Right. And so anyway, I, I was diagnosed with MS. I'm, I'm very transparent about that. Y'all know, if y'all watching, y'all already know. But it's not about being sorry for yourself. It's all about how you respond. Right. So how am I responding? I am, I write, mm -hmm. I'm passionate about what I do. I have a book coming out. It's really to encourage everyone. Anyone that picks up this book is gonna be encouraged. It's mm -hmm. gonna speak to your heart. Wow. And as far as young people are concerned, um, I'm developing a program to really prepare them for college. Awesome. So I'm excited about that. So I need both of you. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at Leslie and what she's doing, it reminds me of, what I did in the past right. and I love it so I identify with her mm -hmm. completely I identify with you from right. financial services mm -hmm. point of view mm -hmm. but however I am totally at a place now that I'm not interested in doing that for a career okay but I'd like to be educated Absolutely. Awesome. I, I'm more of reaching out to people in our community mm -hmm. because they don't have the resources right. they don't they're afraid and so fear will cripple you Mm -hmm. and stop you in your tracks. Right. So um, I, I definitely appreciate you, both you ladies, and what you stand for and what you're doing. And I will be speaking to both of you, rubbing elbows, so I can be greater and greater. That's what it's all about. Yes. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you're um, working on. Any projects you have coming up? Right, so I, I would actually love to have you as a vendor at one of my next events because... Um, your book would probably would help. That. Yeah, would probably help uh, the folks that I'm um, focusing on. So mm -hmm. April 22nd, what we're doing is um, I came up with this uh, concept, maybe away from the women empowerment and mm -hmm. more about empowering the youth. Okay. 
So um, it's called On the Rise, mm -hmm. um, Up and Coming Professionals. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're doing a fundraiser for a young man. His name is Nasheen Webster. He actually lives a few blocks from here on uh, on um, on Buffalo. Really? Okay. And he has been to um, Harvard Medical School. He mm. has. He's 16. Okay. He has um, been to multiple programs, and he is has been invited to Nicaragua for a, um, a surgeon program this summer. Mm -hmm. And the program is four thousand dollars, and we're going to do a fundraiser to help him go. Okay. Okay. He's actually my godson. Okay. So yeah. So then I thought about other youth in the community who are doing some fabulous things, and I said we'll do a fundraiser for for Nashim, and we'll also recognize. The youth. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a 26 year old uh, Portia. Mm -hmm. She is also my goddaughter, but she just passed the bar. Oh, awesome! Love yep. It. She is. Um, she's getting sworn in uh, next week. That's and cool. um, yeah, and so we're going to honor her. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Very very proud of her. And um, we have another young lady. Her name is Tiara, mm -hmm. and she is in. She's a youth advocate for a nonprofit organization. Okay. And uh, actually based a few blocks from here as well. And um, she is pursuing her master's in social work. Mm -hmm. So in May, she will have her master's. So we're recognizing her. And she's an advocate. I mean, she is, it's, it's in her blood. She's, she's incredible. We, um, I also have um, a young lady. She's 13 years old. Her mm -hmm. name is Zoe. She goes to school with my daughter. Mm -hmm. And she has her own cupcake business. Oh. No, literally, like I, mm. I order things from her for events we and for some, clients. We should have had some stuff no. right here today. And I mean, a thirteen-year-old entrepreneur. I love it. Wow. I, yes. I mean, I, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Speaking about empowerment, right? So, um, so we have some pretty incredible people, and I have another person, and I cannot remember off the top of my head who the other young person is. I'm drawing a blank. That's age. That's all right. It'll, it'll, it'll come back. Right. So so we're going to have a fundraiser for these folks. We're going to recognize them for their hard work and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to have some vendors. And we're gonna. it's going to be a chicken and waffle brunch. So oh, okay. <laughs> White Diamond Lounge in, in uh, Long Island and Baldwin, they're actually sponsoring and mm -hmm. um, letting us use the space. Okay. And um, we'll have a DJ. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a good. lot of fun. Sounds good. What about yourself, Donna? Do you have anything um, planned? I mean, I know you're educating people. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what your plans are, um, any particular location where they can come and or how they can get in touch with you even. Let's talk about that. Okay, yeah. So uh, as I mentioned before, we not only provide the education in our financial center. So sometimes I know even though if the office is too far, it's hard for them to come there after the work. They have a kids too. And so what we do as a team of our a uh, group of people. We also organize uh, the education also at the restaurants also mm -hmm. in a local uh, community place. Okay. Okay. So once in the, every Thursday we used to have in this uh, education in English, we have in uh, Chinese, and we also have in uh, Nepali. Okay. Because most of our people belong from Nepali and mm -hmm. also for the Tibetan people also. That's something we try That's to host. That's interesting. That's and, great. Yeah. And also I keep in touch with other organizations in terms of uh, last time uh, since you mentioned about the kids, uh, we are also associated with one of the nonprofit organizations called Heartland Institute of Financial Education, where we also do a college planning program for our kids. Nice. So that's something we help the kids uh, before they go to college, when they are in high school, uh, when they are eighth grade, half past the semester, we help them prepare ahead of time what they need to do before they go to college. Mm -hmm. And that's something is a very good program. If, at least if you attain the seminar, you'll have an idea about what you need to do before you go to college. And uh, last time I also worked with uh, one of my manager with uh, the Boys and Girls uh, Club mm -hmm. in, in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I contact with Miss Farah over there, and uh, we did the presentation with the parents and the kids also. At oh, the same that's time. great! That's incredible. So we are also trying to see how we can also bring this education to the parents also, because I think if parents have a good financial education, they can provide the kids to also. Absolutely. Yes. And yeah. maybe that'll be something that we can bring into the community. Absolutely. So, because our community itself we need to be I, I need to be educated more because I, like I was like oh, funny uh, I, I what drove was always driven me is my creative flow mm -hmm. um, and so the financial services we can bring that into our community yeah. and teach 
the parents and teach the young people or teach the young people and let the young people teach the parents. Absolutely. Because that's what's happening a lot in society. So which brings me to this question. When you look at society and even in your own community, what do you think needs to be changed? Honestly, our our kids, I feel like social media, mm-hmm. the internet is is raising them. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to go outside and play and, and to hopscotch and double dutch. Skelly. And, yeah, Skelly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, yeah. you know, that just doesn't happen now. Yes. You know, and, um, and social media is such an influence. You know, I mean, I love the love and hip hop shows and, you know, the entertainment, right, the Ratchet right, right. Mondays. and But it, it's, it, I mean, they the kids literally mock that. They, yes. they look forward to that. They... And that's something that's a little scary. You know, right. my daughter will ask me, she's like, you know, so I can't even remember what, I mean, I just remember being flabbergasted, but she asked me, what does this mean? Someone was saying that. And I was just like, don't worry about this. She's like, if you're not going to, I'm just going to go look it up on the internet. And I was just like, oh my God. And that's, it's right there at their hands. And then, you know, what happened to the sitting around the table, having dinner together? Mm. And having conversation about how your day was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, does that even exist anymore? Maybe right. during holidays when right. the family gets together. It's true. I'm, I'm a little guilty of that. Because um, you're am. busy. Honestly, yeah. I'm, I'm a little guilty. I, I'll, I come home and I'm, I'm right on the computer mm-hmm. and, you know, I'll, I'll make dinner. And, you know, I'll tell my daughter, come come in my office and let's sit and eat. And she's mm-hmm. like, no, I'll stay in the kitchen. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to take 20 minutes digest my food <laughs> so yeah but um the, the that's what i think is happening in our society is is the kids are definitely being raised you know social media is mm. such a strong influence and mm-hmm. and it's hard it's hard because this is what's important to them you know what their friends are doing and 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 those things so i feel like we need to get a handle on our youth and right. if we do that you know like in my day it took a village, you know, Absolutely. and you know, if the neighbor saw you doing something, then your mother saw you doing something, mm-hmm. you were busted because, you know, they would grab you and be like, come sit down or don't do this or don't do that. And it's not like that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. People put their head down. They don't want to bother. You, you can't know, chastise you your can't, child. Yeah. God. So that's, that's, that's what I would say. Yeah. It, yeah I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what do you think, Doma, as far as the, your own community and society, you see what's going on. Um, we saw even this week, yesterday they had a march. There was a march um, as far as um, the young people because of the gun violence. Right. You know, what mm-hmm. happened in Parkland, Florida, you know, a few weeks ago. And then there was a young lady um, that was in D.C. And I know she spoke about another area. I don't know if it was Alabama. I don't know. I don't remember. But mm-hmm. she spoke about how someone was gunned down, right. you know, and lives being lost. And, and, and the way that she presented it, she said, I represent the little black girl <laughs> that yeah. doesn't make the front page. Mm-hmm as a result of losing their lives to gun violence. Right. And then the NRA right, is saying that they should have a right to bear arms with the Second Amendment, right? Mm-hmm. And they have a right to bear arms, but now you have innocent lives being lost right. because an 18-year-old has the ability to go purchase a semi-automatic or whatever it is, I don't know, gun, right. and killing people? I know, that's... Yeah, that's- it's yeah. scary. Yeah, it's scary. We we already have to worry about the police. Tell me about it. Having yeah. they're they're permitted to have these guns. And we already have to rely on these these the police officers being trained properly and being um and having good judgment, which I don't think most of them have, um, on when to shoot and when not to. And now you wanna give this same right to school teachers? Wow. Makes no sense. It is crazy. So mm. now you're taking someone who is has not been trained mentally, physically. They're young. They're kids themselves. They, they really officers. are. So you so you you have school teachers now that have not been trained and now they're going to have guns. Now what happens if a student that wants to harm other students overpowers the teacher cuz now we have guns in the school? Like it's just it's insanity. It's mm-hmm. insanity. It, it, it really is. It really is. And we have to care enough about each other right. to want to make the change. And what's happening is, is that we are going to learn from these young people, right. these 10-year-olds, the 11, 11-year-olds, these 12-year-olds who are standing up and saying enough is enough. Right. It could be us next. Next, yeah. That's true. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see young people standing up mm-hmm. in, in such a way mm-hmm. and using their voice. Right. Mm-hmm. Using their voice, making a sin, and saying, we have to stop this. There needs to be a change. We're afraid for our future. Are we going to make it? Right. right. Are we right. going to make it? So mm-hmm. it's really important that we pay attention and hear them. You know, just like even sometimes we get so busy with our children and they're trying to tell us something. Or even if you look at their behavior. Right. They're trying to tell us something through their behavior. Mm-hmm. We have to pay attention. Yeah, we, have to, we, have, we have to be better. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm going to come back to you, Delma, in terms of the community. What do you think? Your, mm-hmm. Even your own community, what you, what you see. Um, what do you think needs to be changed? What do you think could really be an effective change um, in addition to educating people financially? Well, uh, I see in my community, I know everybody is so, even the parents, although they're so busy making money, Mm-hmm. And uh, I know we try to send the kids to the school, but at the same time, along the way, they meet bad friends. And then at the same time, they don't want to go to school also. And some of the young kids are there in, in drug attack now. And that's most issue. Uh, it's happening now. And some of them try to rob some of the stuff from other people's house also. Mm-hmm. And most of our teenagers kind of like, they don't, they're not doing the stuff they're supposed to go to school, get to college. And in that, I think that's something is, it's our responsibility as a parents to make sure you give enough time for your kids, not just to make money, right? right? right. And also, it's your responsibility also at the same time to take care of your kids. Mm-hmm. Because I think if you don't take care of your kids, somebody will be more responsible for that. And that's when they get into trouble. Yes, yes. Absolutely. yes. Because yes. We're, we're molding the men and women of tomorrow. That's mm-hmm. what we're doing. Right. We have to do it right. Right, right. So that's something I feel. And then from other side, I feel... Right now, the main issue right now in America, I feel it's the spending crisis right now. Mm-hmm. Even though you don't have money, people love to spend also uh, okay. because of the credit card, you know, which you can apply. Mm-hmm. So back in our country, we don't have, see any of the credit card or anything like that. So that's the reason it's like people have more debts and debts. Mm-hmm. And that's how I know. She's singing my song. Yes. I need to, listen, yeah. I, yes. my prayer is that I will get out of debt and then I'll be a better steward of my finances. Right, yes. right, right. Absolutely. But you know what, when you when you don't know, and I don't know mm-hmm. if anybody's guilty of this, but when I was younger and I had a moment where I was feeling down, I would take the day off and then I would go to the store and buy a fur coat, a mink coat, diamond ring. You know, mm-hmm. felt good. You know, and, an emotional shopper, yeah. right? And, 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 and the thing is, it's okay if you did that and you would go get yourself a cute little twenty dollars t shirt or something. But I'm going to spend thousands of dollars. I'm like, eh, I deserve it. Let me get it. Oh, I'm going to take this trip. Don't really have, but I got to get away. I can manage it. Okay. And and so figure it out later. If I thought about it, exactly. If I th- really thought about it, you know, we just have to be practical. Yeah. Right. And we 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 can't be an emotional shopper. And like I said, my it, that would happen every so often, but the fact that I would spend so much money is like I'm shooting myself in the foot. Like, what are you doing? So we, we have to be better. And so I'm really trying to teach my son, as we all do, to yes. be better than what we were. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Because at some point, especially my son's an only child, right? I mean, he, he has a, 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 a brother, half brother, but he's an only child. In our home, is, it was just him. Mm-hmm. So I want him to be able to stand on his own feet, make his own choices, you never have to go to someone and ask for anything because there's no one there. Right. No. There's no one there. Mm-hmm. There's me. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, we're like, here, 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 I don't care. But there's no one there. And I thank God <laughs> that I've been able to at least put a few practical things in place so I've been able to sustain mm-hmm. with the help of the Lord. And that's it. Because there's no one. There's no husband. There's no, okay. But... I'm still a good catch, just on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So, so there is me. Yeah. And so we want our children to be able to make their own way. Mm-hmm. And be bold enough to dream. Yes. Be smart enough to be educated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that because bold. We need that. Yes. yes. We need women like you to influence mm-hmm. our young people. And I really believe, like, if we get the young people, the young people are going to get us. Mm-hmm. They will. Mm. Yes. And we just need to be there to support them in such a positive, um, in a positive way. Show me the concerns that you have as a young person. Mm-hmm. 
teach me how to understand the challenges that you're facing. Right. And then let me be the person that can hold you up and support you yes. to be the best you. Because it's their time. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's their time. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, I'm sorry. Went to the left a little bit. But still, it's all good stuff that we need to discuss. Yes. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Leslie, let's talk a little bit about... Well, let's talk about your relationship with World Fest. Let's talk about what you do with them. Okay. Let's talk about that. So, I don't know what my exact title is. Um, with One World Fest, I can't remember. VP of Business Development. Okay. So I, with One World Fest, um, I, I, I've worked with Kamel, the CEO and founder on um, many other projects over the years. And uh, he pulled me into work with One World Fest. And um, what I do is I, I do all of the graphics for the flyers and those, those things. Um, mm -hmm. We manage the social media. Mm -hmm. And um, we also work with, the posting and strategically getting those things together. Mm -hmm. uh, the deck I'm going to promise I'm going to look at soon. Um, so we work with those things and uh, I'm really, really, really happy to be part of this movement. You know, um, I feel like I'm doing something that's going to help a lot of people and we have so many positive messages that we're trying to get out. Absolutely. Um, so I'm really happy to be part of the brand. Right. And, and there are also some initiatives that we have, mm -hmm. um, which we definitely could utilize you, um, partner up with you mm -hmm. as far as financial education. We all need that. Mm -hmm. We all need that. And mm -hmm. clearly you're passionate about that. Mm -hmm. um, I know in terms of One World Fest, we have an initiative that we're working on doing the One World Fest Unity mm -hmm. concert. concert. Oh, okay. And so um, we're preparing for that now. And in such a way that we are looking to meet with people that have the same passion that you two ladies have to connect to their hearts. So this movement can really flourish. Um, we're, it's all about the people. It's all about expressing our traditional values and culture mm -hmm. and, and appreciating one another. Yes. And so we can uplift. And this is going to be a phenomenal that's going to happen for the millennials right. that are there. Because again, we're going to be there to support them. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how people can get in touch with you. In terms of how they can reach me? How they can reach you. Okay. So the best thing is, I think it's now about the social media. Mm -hmm. so that's something they can connect with me through okay. Facebook. Or... And you want to give your information, spell it out? Or... Uh, yes, you can call me. Uh, it's not okay if I that's have a phone number. Yes, if you can want to reach me, you can call me. It's 917-671-7619. One more time. 917-671-7619. And your name again, please. My name is Don Malhamo. Okay, awesome. And Leslie, let's talk about how we can reach you. Uh, so I'm Leslie Jacobs, and uh, my website is thejacobsagencynyc.com. Uh, you can also call me at 833-JACOBS1. Uh, on social media, we are Team Lady Diamonds. We are also the.jacobs.agency on Instagram and um, Facebook, the same names. Okay, sounds good. And I'm the real Lisa Ray on Instagram. No. <laughs> so stay tuned. I have some things coming, and it's all about connecting to the people and empowering. Never be afraid. If you see any of us, walk up to us, especially anyone, especially the young people. Walk up to us and have a conversation with us. We'll be happy to help you in any way that we can. Absolutely. Um, I'm on Facebook as Angel Ray. That's my middle name. Um, there's, there's a reason for that, and you'll hear about it soon. Um, I want to thank One World Fest Global for giving us the opportunity and this platform to really speak. Once again, this is Women's History Month. And um, you know what? Every day, women are making history. So just like, you know, any other month that I, you know, recognizes us for something, Black History Month, every day we're making history. So we need to remember that and, you know, walk with our head up high Absolutely. and be able to present our best selves at any given time yes. and share that. Mm -hmm. Any last things that you want to say? I know we got a couple minutes. Any last comments that you want to say about today or anything? Um, so one thing I didn't talk about today, um, especially with women empowerment was my team. Yes. So I have a team of women that uh, work with me mm -hmm. and um, we're, we're called team lady diamonds. Right. And, um, and it consists of women and their different talents and uh, some of them have developed brands behind those talents. 
wonderful. You know, and and that's what I'm all about. Yes. So we have um, Juanita Morris, mm -hmm. and uh, she has a degree in marketing. Awesome. So she helps a lot with the strategy and, mm -hmm. and, and content and things of that nature. We have S. Braxton, which she is, she has a radio show as well. Oh, she's awesome. done radio hosting and she's, um, she's just in church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we've been trying to coordinate the schedule for her right. to join us. And she, is, she handles all of the event, um, the spokesmanship and okay. speaking on the mic and right. those things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we also have Disa who is, um, an insurance agent, um, she is, she's been there for over 20 years. Um, and we also have Sonia, mm -hmm. who's a, a civil service worker. Okay. Here. So she, um, so these women are the force behind the brand. Okay. Um, you know, we have weekly meetings. We're constantly in touch, you know, pulling different ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and everyone was kind of just kind of doing their own thing, and I, you know, I just kind of handpicked, pulled them together. Right, right. You know, I made promoters out of them. Yes, you know, <laughs> yes, and that's so, what it's all about. Yeah, yes. that's how it happens. Yeah. So, um, and and Sonia even has she has her own business doing photography. Mm -hmm. Um, her daughter has been on, on Broadway mm -hmm. plays. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's um performed at um. A Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. So she's very good with um, kids photography and, and kind of getting you into um, television and print and things mm -hmm. like that. So we just kind of all help each other. Like they were all there yesterday at the mm -hmm. event for mm -hmm. Infinity Love. Everyone right. was there serving food, picking up things, helping, and um, whatever's and, needed. Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, absolutely, whatever's needed. And it's it, you know, in a lot of projects we work on, it's you know, it's not even about money. It's about helping. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. It's the passion. Yeah. And a lot of people think you have your own business, you're making a ton of money. You have no idea how much we give back. Mm -hmm. You know what I, I mean? And I understand that. <laughs> so and, and that's what it is. It's it's a sisterhood with the team. And giving your of your time. Oh, you know. Yeah. This this I mean, there's not a price tag that you can Absolutely. even put on yes. that. You know what I Absolutely. mean? So but it's I agree. okay. It's okay. It's I agree. okay. Yeah. Okay. And Doma, any last comments or something that you want to bring out that maybe we didn't touch on? Well, I think uh, I think I already said this before, but I just want to say one last one. As as I mentioned, we have a goal that uh, we want to educate one million families in North America by 2020. Mm -hmm. And I can't do this alone, even though we have a 50,000 people, 57,000 people in our team. Wow. We are still looking for more people to be part of this campaign. Right. So in that way, we can reach out more families out there. So if you want, and if you have anybody in other states also, please uh, let us know so we can help them out to send them to their local office so they can learn all this knowledge for free also at the same time too. Awesome, right. awesome. So I just kind of want to bring everybody's attention to, if they can see it, our banner, Radio One World Fest. So go on to one or the number one, oneworldfest.global and see what we're all about. And Radio One World Fest, once again, we're here every last Sunday of the month. Um, it's usually Ruel Burford, Nefertaria Jones, Kamel Ellis, which is our CEO and founder, and myself, yours truly, Lisa Ray, the Bill Lisa Ray, Angel Ray, look for that. And um, I want to thank my guests, Don Yama and Miss Leslie Jacobs. And uh, I look forward to networking with you young ladies Hi. and learning from you and just helping out in any way that I can. Thank you. Um, this is Lisa Ray for Radio One World Fest. We're going to be signing off, but I am so grateful once again for you ladies Absolutely. coming on and being here. Thank you. And I look forward to working with you guys, and I'm here to help in any way that I can. And I know I could use your help. Yes. So I just kind of put that out there. So they're going to help me, guys. Hi. And they can help you too. So I hope yes. you took down the information. Tune in next time. We're here next month, the last Sunday of the month. And we're just going to put our ones up because we stand for One World Fest yes. Global. Radio One World Fest signing out. Have a blessed day.